If you're a content creator, chances are you've heard of the magical promise of passive income, and maybe you've even considered building out some passive income streams for yourself. Here's the thing, a lot of businessy types on YouTube will tell you that the best way to earn passive income online is by becoming an educator and selling online courses. And sure, that's fine, and it can definitely be a good source of income for some people, but it might not be for everyone, especially if you're feeling like you don't necessarily want to be an educator. Also, if we're honest, it is most definitely not passive. Take it from someone who put in the hours to create a course. Like, that takes a lot of work. So in this video, I wanted to share with you the various passive income streams that you can set up for yourself as a content creator that don't rely on educating your audience necessarily, but can be just based on providing value to your community in other ways. So if you are ready to make money in your sleep and build the creator business of your dreams, then this video is for you. I'm gonna take you through five forms of passive income that you can add to your business, no matter what niche you're in. And by the way, thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. The biggest myth about passive income is right there in the name, that it's passive. And if we're all honest with ourselves, passive income is never truly passive. There's always gonna be some amount of work required to get it set up. Basically, passive income is not gonna be service-based or like physical product-based. It's gonna take some upfront work, but once it's created, it can scale in a way that is not directly tied to your time investment. So affiliate marketing is probably one of the most common passive income streams that most content creators have as a part of their business. This is where you essentially refer customers to a product or a service and you earn a little bit of a commission off of doing that. 99% of the time this is going to work through you having a unique code or link that you share with your audience. There are all kinds of programs that kind of amalgamate this whether it's like Amazon Associates so you can have like an Amazon storefront and you can link to anything across Amazon. That's probably the most popular one. Another really popular way of doing this is through a site called reward style. Reward style is unique because you can generate affiliate links for different stores like all across the web. So this program isn't tied to a particular retailer, which makes it nice because you can just like go to your favorite website and generate a link. And nine times out of 10, you can create a link for the product. Reward style is also known for having slightly higher commissions than Amazon Associates. So if you're able to link that same product and like find it somewhere other than Amazon, you're probably better off doing it on reward style. But beyond that, there's all kinds of affiliate programs that individual businesses will set up. So I'm an affiliate with all kinds of different software and like apps that I use and I recommend to all of you. My best suggestion is just if you have something that you use all the time and you find that your audience is often asking you about it, just try Googling it along with affiliate program or partner program and see what you find. To be totally transparent, this is an area of my business that I'm really working on expanding for 2023. So I don't necessarily have the most impressive stats on my own end because I'm just now trying to like make sure I share links all the time and all that stuff, but you truly can make a lot of money off of this. YouTube queen Catherine Manning actually made a video a while back about her affiliate income. And just recently in a reel, she reported that in the past five years, she's made over $298,000 in affiliate income. Um, what the heck? Clearly I need to get on top of this because there's money to be made here if you are consistent about it. And obviously the more reach you get, the uh, more it's gonna scale. The simple definition of a digital product is really anything that your audience could download in exchange for a price. So it might be like a PDF, an ebook, a video, a Notion template, Lightroom presets, really the list is endless. Now, certainly there's lots of educational stuff that can fall into this category, but I think if you get creative, any kind of content creator can come up with digital products to sell. For example, for artists, you can sell printable files so that people can download your art and print it if they want. If you're into productivity or organization, you can sell templates for Notion or like Google Docs or spreadsheets. For photo video people, you can sell presets and LUTs for color grading photos and videos. And of course, there's always checklists, workbooks, journaling pages that can work really across any niche. I personally have leaned really heavily into the Notion templates because I am a sucker for Notion. I use it all the time. And once I started offering a few, I realized that y'all are into them. So I've got a bunch of different Notion templates for sale on my website, as well as a few different Lightroom presets. And in 2022, I made over $17,000 selling Notion templates, which I think is pretty impressive. 
And that's with just me kind of casually mentioning these within my YouTube videos here and there. I feel like I could really scale that if I actually started, you know, like making Pinterest content about it or even running ads. And I actually just posted a whole video talking about my strategy for making money with digital products that you can check out up here if you want to. Google AdSense is a term that a lot of bloggers and YouTubers will be familiar with. This is an ad service run by Google, which allows you to place ads on your website or like here on YouTube in front of my video. Though, of course, there is going to be some upfront work involved with this. So it's not technically passive because it's work to create videos or blog posts. But the reason why I've slotted into this list is because ultimately it does keep making you money even after the initial work is done. On average for my YouTube channel, I make around $3,000 a month from AdSense, though it varies a lot depending on how many views I'm getting, obviously. But just to show you how much this can keep generating revenue even after you've posted your video, this video where I talk about my process for creating Instagram Reels has in total in the past 90 days generated $931. And I posted this video over a year ago now. So even though this video is a year old, in the last three months, it's made me almost a thousand dollars. Isn't that cool? Like that just kind of shows you how once you post something, whether it's a YouTube video or a blog, AdSense can keep making you money on it because these pieces of content are evergreen. People are gonna keep finding them into the future. So especially if you're a content creator that is primarily making content on like Instagram or TikTok right now, I really encourage you to investigate these evergreen forms of content like blogging and YouTube that allow you to utilize Google AdSense because it really can be a strong passive income stream for you once you build up a library of content. Now, speaking of that, with any of these forms of passive income streams, you may need to kind of brush up on your skills or maybe learn something new in order to really implement them, which is where the sponsor of today's video, Skillshare, comes in handy. If you're not familiar by now, Skillshare is an online learning platform full of thousands of classes for creative and curious people like you and me. You can learn everything from graphic design to social media marketing, to film photography, to video editing and more. Specifically, if you wanna work on your video skills and start building up that library of content on YouTube so you can take advantage of AdSense, then I would highly recommend checking out Haliz Nervais' course on Skillshare called Learn Adobe Premiere Pro and Edit a How-To video for YouTube. You know, Skillshare is always gonna be ad-free, so you can learn in a nice, undistracted environment. Plus, they're always adding new premium courses, so you can keep brushing up on new skills and learning new ways that you can use to generate passive income. The first 1,000 people to use my exclusive link in the description will get a one-month free trial of Skillshare, so make sure you go check that out. Here's a form of passive income that you might not have heard of before as a content creator, and I'll admit this is for like a little bit more established creators out there, so if you're already doing some brand deals, this tip is for you. You can earn passive income by charging brands more for usage rights and exclusivity. Now again, we could go on and on about what's really passive. And obviously when you are doing brand deals, it's not at all passive income. You're creating a video, you know, for the brand, but you can keep earning money, especially with usage rights, even after posting, if you kind of pitch that to the brand as part of your package. If you're not familiar with these terms, usage rights is basically when a creator charges a brand a certain fee in exchange for their right to share your content on their social media platforms on their website. And also in some cases you are giving them the right to then put paid ads behind your content. So they're gonna like boost it from your account. Exclusivity on the other hand is basically as a creator when you tell a brand, I won't work with your competitors. So you sign on their contract saying, I will be exclusive to you for you know 90 days after my last video with you goes live. I won't work with anybody else like in your niche. And normally they will have a list of who those competitors are. When you are doing brand deals, you should be charging extra for these things. And my very first tip for you is when you get a contract from a brand, Make sure you go into that contract and you go command F or control F and search for the words usage rights and exclusivity because normally brands can be kind of sneaky and they might just include that in the contract without really bringing it up to you in your meeting or in your email exchange. So make sure you figure out what they are expecting from that contract and if they've built in a certain amount of exclusivity or usage rights that you didn't even know about, make sure you come back and say, actually, I have a rate for that. So what I do is I actually charge 15% of the original package price of that piece of content that we worked on together per month that they are allowed to use it. So like, let's just say I did an Instagram post for a hundred dollars. 
I wouldn't actually, but just for the sake of an easy number, if that Instagram post costs the brand $100 to pay me to create, then I would charge them $15 for every month I was going to allow them to use that content. So you can see how this can become passive and kind of build up over time, especially when you build in the opportunity to renew. So my typical recommendation is don't ever sell more than like six months of usage rights at a time, just in case things would go completely sideways. And six months from now that brand is totally canceled and you don't want anything to do with them, then you know, you're not stuck like allowing them to use your content in perpetuity and like being connected with them. So probably six months at a time is good. It also gives you the opportunity to increase that usage fee after that first six months. The last passive income idea I wanted to share with you is selling stock photos and videos. If you're a content creator, then chances are you might just know your way around a camera, even if it's just your phone. And if you are really good at taking photos and stock footage, then you might be able to make some money off of that by selling it to stock footage library sites. There's a lot of different companies that have like set up programs where you can submit your content and then it gets added to the library. And then when people download it, you get like a certain commission from that. So these sites are like iStock Photo, Shutterstock, Pond5 and Adobe stock. So I haven't personally implemented this income stream though. Trust me, your girl did think about it back in the day when I was kind of freelancing and just hustling and trying to cobble together a full-time income, but I ended up doing other stuff instead. But according to this Reddit user that I found when doing research, they make around $1 per clip per month for their stock footage. And because they have about 600 clips uploaded to Pond5, they're getting about $600 a month. So especially if you're a bit of a photo video nerd, it might be worthwhile looking into because you might already have some really great stock footage and photos sitting around on a hard drive that you might be able to make a little bit of money off of. I really think that one of the most important things for you to do as a content creator in your business is really focus on diversifying your income. If you have multiple different income streams set up in your business, then you're avoiding the risk of putting all of your eggs in one basket and then that going away one day. Like if the only way you're making money is off of YouTube AdSense, for example, and you don't do anything else, then if your YouTube views really start to dwindle, you know, your income is gonna go away. So by spreading it out and having a lot of different ways that you bring in revenue, you're kind of insulating yourself from any market changes that you can't anticipate. Now, of course, another common way that creators make money that I've been mentioning throughout the video is brand partnerships. And if you want to learn more about the strategy that I use to really increase my brand deal revenue and actually make over $60,000 in 2022, just from brand deals alone, then you're going to want to check out this video next because I share the whole secret behind that. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having adventures and following your dreams and I will see you in the next video. Bye.